I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. So we again continue in 2 Nephi, and we are reading the words of Jacob, that he's speaking to the Nephites at a conference or Sabbath meeting sometime after the 40th year, but before the 55th year. So in that 15-year span, the last chapter was just quoting Isaiah chapter 50. We now move into chapter 8. In the last days the Lord shall comfort Zion and gather Israel. The redeemed shall come to Zion amid great joy. Compare Isaiah chapter 51 and chapter 52, verses 1 and 2. Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. Look unto the rock from whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit from whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah, she that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light for the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart I have written my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake! Awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days. Art thou not he that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not he that hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy and holiness shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I am he, yea, I am he that comforteth you. Behold, who art thou, that thou shouldest be afraid of man, who shall die, and of the Son of Man, who shall be made like unto grass? And forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hast feared continually every day, because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy? And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is my name, and I have put my words in thy mouth, and have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Behold, thou art my people. Awake! Awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which hast drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling wrung out, and none to guide her among all the sons she hath brought forth, neither that taketh her by the hand of all the sons she hath brought up. These two sons are come unto thee, who shall be sorry for thee, thy desolation and destruction, and the famine and the sword, and by whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted, save these two. They lie in the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken and not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord and thy God pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, who have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground, and as the street to them that went over. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength, O Zion! Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city! 
For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Just a few brief words. As it says in the heading, this is talking about the last days and the gathering of Israel and the final comfort to the saints in the last days when Christ returns and Zion is established and all this stuff going on. That's what this chapter is about. And I love the continual repetition there, awake, awake. First, it's put on strength, O Zion. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Then stand up, O Jerusalem. Then put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. At least three times, awake, awake. Now, what this is talking about, when it says to be awake, when it calls us to awaken, is be aware of God's promises. Put on the strength of the Lord. Look to Him. Do not slumber in your life, but look and be actively engaged in the work of the Lord. I do find it interesting that these two chapters, 50 and 51, are connected. But it's also interesting that Jacob is quoting the first two verses of chapter 52 as well. And it kind of hints at the idea that the understanding of the ancients about Isaiah was much different than our understanding today. I just find it interesting that he, he does connect at least the first two verses. Maybe, maybe in Isaiah the first two verses of chapter 52 should be part of chapter 51. It's an interesting idea. But if you want to get my full thoughts on the meaning, probably check out my video on re reading Isaiah chapters 51 and 52, which I will link to in the description. And we leave that here, and we'll see you.